Gospel of John Commentary by St. Augustine, Part 2 In this edition of SOS, Sermons of Saints, St. Augustine gives a magnificent homily on verses 6 through 14 from the first chapter of the Gospel according to St. John. This is Part 1 of that homily. The text of St. Augustine's commentary on the Gospel of John is in the public domain. All of the pictures used in this video are also in the public domain. The following Virgo Potens production is part two of a series of narrated videos of St. Augustine's commentary on the Gospel of John, narrated by Tony Capo Bianco. Tract 2, Chapter 1, Verses 6 through 14. It is fitting, brethren, that as far as possible we should treat of the text of Holy Scripture, and especially of the Holy Gospel, without omitting any portion, that both we ourselves may derive nourishment according to our capacity, and may minister to you from that source from which we have been nourished. Last Lord's Day, we remember, we treated of the first section, that is, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was nothing made. That which was made, in him is life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. So far, I believe, had I advanced in the treatment of the passage, let all who were present recall what was then said, and those of you who were not present, believe me, and those who chose to be present. Now, therefore, because we cannot always be repeating everything out of justice to those who desire to hear what follows, and because repetition of the former thought is a burden to them and deprives them of what succeeds, let those who were absent on the former occasion refrain from demanding repetition, but, together with those who were here, listen to the present exposition. It goes on. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Truly, brethren beloved, those things which were said before were said regarding the ineffable divinity of Christ, and almost ineffably. For who shall comprehend? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And do not allow the name Word to appear mean to you, through the habit of daily words, for it is added, and the Word was God. This Word is he of whom yesterday we spoke much, and I trust that God was present, and that even from only thus much speaking something reached your hearts. In the beginning was the Word. He is the same, and is in the same manner. As he is, so he is always. He cannot be changed, that is, he is. This, his name, he spoke to his servant Moses. I am that I am, and he that is hath sent me. Who then shall comprehend this when you see that all mortal things are variable? When you see that not only do bodies vary as to their qualities, by being born, by increasing, by becoming less, by dying, but that even souls themselves, through the effect of diverse volitions, are distended and divided. When you see that men can obtain wisdom if they apply themselves to its light and heat, and also lose wisdom if they remove themselves from it through some evil influence. When, therefore, you see that all things are variable, what is that which is, unless that which transcends all things which are, so that they are not? Who then can receive this, or who, in what manner soever he may have applied the strength of his mind to touch that which is, can reach to that which he may, in any way, have touched with his mind? It is as if one were to see his native land at a distance, and the sea intervening. He sees whither he would go, but he has not the means of going. So we desire to arrive at that our stability, where that which is, is, 
because this alone always is as it is. The sea of this world interrupts our course, even although already we see whither we go, for many do not even see whither they go. That there might be a way by which we could go, he has come from him to whom we wished to go. And what has he done? He has appointed a tree by which we may cross the sea. For no one is able to cross the sea of this world unless born by the cross of Christ. Even he who is of weak eyesight sometimes embraces this cross, and he who does not see from afar whither he goes, let him not depart from it, and it will carry him over. Therefore, my brethren, I would desire to have impressed this upon your hearts. If you wish to live in a pious and Christian manner, cling to Christ according to that which he became for us, that you may arrive at him according to that which is, and according to that which was. He approached, that for us he might become this, because he became that for us, on which the weak may be born, and cross the sea of this world, and reach their native country where there will be no need of a ship, for no sea is crossed. It is better then not to see with the mind that which is, and yet not to depart from the cross of Christ, than to see with the mind and despise the cross of Christ. It is good beyond this, and best of all, if it be possible, that we both see whither we ought to go, and hold fast to that which carries us as we go. This they were able to do, the great minds of the mountains, who have been called mountains, whom the light of divine justice preeminently illuminates. They were able to do this, and saw that which is. For John, seeing this, said, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. They saw this, and in order that they might arrive at that which they saw from afar, they did not depart from the cross of Christ, and did not despise Christ's lowliness. But little ones who cannot understand this, who do not depart from the cross and passion and resurrection of Christ, are conducted in that same ship to that which they do not see, in which they also arrive who do see, but truly there have been some philosophers of this world who have sought for the Creator by means of the creature. For he can be found by means of the creature, as the Apostle plainly says, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and glory, so they are without excuse. And it follows, because that, when they knew God, he did not say, because they did not know, but because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. How darkened? It follows, when he says more plainly, Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. They saw whither they must come, but ungrateful to him who afforded them what they saw, they wished to ascribe to themselves what they saw, and having become proud, they lost what they saw, and were turned from it to idols and images, and to the worship of demons, to adore the creature, and to despise the Creator. But these, having been blinded, did those things, and became proud, that they might be blinded, when they were proud, they said that they were wise. Those, therefore, concerning whom he said, Who, when they had known God, saw this which John says, that by the word of God all things were made. For these things are also found in the books of the philosophers, and that God has an only begotten Son, by whom are all things. They were able to see that which is, but they saw it from afar. They were unwilling to hold the lowliness of Christ, in which ship they might have arrived in safety at that which they were able to see from afar, and the cross of Christ appeared vile to them. The sea has to be crossed, 
and dost thou despise the wood? O proud wisdom, thou laughest to scorn the crucified Christ. It is he whom thou dost see from afar. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. But wherefore was he crucified? Because the wood of his humiliation was needful to thee. For thou hast become swollen with pride, and hast been cast out far from the fatherland. And by the waves of this world has the way been intercepted, and there is no means of passing to the fatherland, unless born by the wood. Ungrateful one, thou laughest him to scorn who has come to thee, that thou mayest return. He has become the way, and that through the sea. Thence he walked in the sea, to show that there is a way in the sea. But thou who art not able in any way thyself to walk in the sea, be carried in a ship, be carried by the wood. Believe in the crucified one, and thou shalt arrive thither. On account of thee he was crucified, to teach thee humility. And because if he should come as God, he would not be recognized. For if he should come as God, he would not come to those who were not able to see God. For not according to his Godhead does he either come or depart, since he is everywhere present and is contained in no place. But according to what did he come? He appeared as a man. Therefore, because he was so man that the God lay hid in him, there was sent before him a great man, by whose testimony he might be found to be more than man. And who is this? He was a man. And how could that man speak the truth concerning God? He was sent by God. What was he called? Whose name was John? Wherefore did he come? He came for a witness that he might bear witness concerning the light, that all might believe through him. What sort of man was he who was to bear witness concerning the light? Something great was that John, vast merit, great grace, great loftiness. Admire, by all means, admire, but as it were a mountain. But a mountain is in darkness unless it be clothed with light. Therefore only admire John that you may hear what follows. He was not that light, lest if when thou thinkest the mountain to be the light, thou may shipwreck on the mountain, and find not consolation. But what oughtest thou to admire? The mountain as a mountain. But lift thyself up to him who illuminates the mountain, which for this end was elevated, that it might be the first to receive the rays, and make them known to your eyes. Therefore he was not that light. Wherefore then did he come? But that he might bear witness concerning the light. Why so? That all might believe through him. And concerning what light was he to bear witness? That was the true light. Wherefore is it added true? Because an enlightened man is also called a light. But the true light is that which enlightens. For even our eyes are called lights. And nevertheless, unless either during the night a lamp is lighted, or during the day the sun goes forth, these lights are open in vain. Thus, therefore, John was a light, but not the true light, because, if not enlightened, he would have been darkness, but by enlightenment he became a light. For unless he had been enlightened, he would have been darkness." as all those once impious men to whom, as believers, the apostle said, Ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Unless he had added, In the Lord, we should not have understood. Light, he says, in the Lord. Darkness you were not in the Lord, for ye were sometimes darkness, where he did not add, In the Lord. Therefore, darkness in you, light in the Lord. And thus, he was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. But where is that light? He was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. 
If every man that cometh, then also John. The true light, therefore, enlightened him by whom he desired himself to be pointed out. Understand, beloved, for he came to infirm minds, to wounded hearts, to the gaze of dim-eyed souls. For this purpose had he come, and whence was the soul able to see that which perfectly is? Even as it commonly happens that by means of some illuminated body, the sun, which we cannot see with the eyes, is known to have risen. Because even those who have wounded eyes are able to see a wall illuminated and enlightened by the sun, or a mountain, or a tree, or anything of that sort, and by means of another body illuminated, that arising is shown to those who are not yet able to gaze on it. Thus, therefore, all those to whom Christ came were not fit to see him. Upon John he shed the beams of his light, and by means of him confessing himself to have been irradiated and enlightened, not claiming to be one who irradiates and enlightens. He is known who enlightens, he is known who illuminates, He is known who fills. And who is that? He who lighteth every man, he says, who cometh into the world. For if man had not receded from that light, he would not have required to be illuminated. But for this reason has he to be illuminated here, because he departed from that light by which man might always have been illuminated. What then? If he came hither, where was he? He was in this world. He was both here and came hither. He was here according to his divinity, and he came hither according to the flesh. Because when he was here according to his divinity, he could not be seen by the foolish, by the blind, and the wicked. These wicked men are the darkness concerning which it was said. The light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Behold, both here he is now, and here he was, and here he is always, and he never departs, departs no whither. There is need that thou have some means whereby thou mayest see that which never departs from thee. There is need that thou depart not from him who departs no whither. There is need that thou desert not, and thou shalt not be deserted. Do not fall, and his son will not set to thee. If thou fallest, his son setteth upon thee. But if thou standest, he is present with thee. But thou hast not stood. Remember how thou hast fallen, how he who fell before thee cast thee down. For he cast thee down, not by violence, not by assault, but by thine own will. For hadst thou not consented unto evil, thou wouldest have stood, thou wouldest have remained enlightened. But now, because thou hast already fallen, and hast become wounded in heart, the organ by which that light can be seen, he came to thee such as thou mightest see. And he, in such fashion, manifested himself as man, that he sought testimony from man. From man God seeks testimony, and God has man as a witness. God has man as a witness, but on account of man, so infirm are we. By a lamp we seek the day, because John himself was called a lamp, the Lord saying, He was a burning and a shining light, and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light, but I have greater witness than John. Therefore he showed that for the sake of men he desired to have himself revealed by a lamp to the faith of those who believed, that by means of the same lamp his enemies might be confounded. There were enemies who tempted him and said, Tell us, by what authority doest thou these things? I also, saith he, will ask you one question. Answer me. The baptism of John, whence was it? From heaven or of men? And they were troubled, and said among themselves, If we shall say from heaven, he will say unto us, 
Why did ye not believe him? But if we shall say of men, we fear the people, lest they should stone us, for they held John as a prophet. Afraid of stoning, but fearing more to confess the truth, they answered a lie to the truth, and wickedness imposed a lie upon itself. For they said, We know not. And the Lord, because they shut the door against themselves by professing ignorance of what they knew, did not open to them, because they did not knock. For it is said, Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Not only did these not knock that it might be opened to them, but by denying that they knew, they barred that door against themselves. And the Lord says to them, Neither tell I you by what authority I do these things. And they were confounded by means of John, and in them were the words fulfilled, I have ordained a lamp for mine anointed. His enemies will I clothe with shame. End of part one of St. Augustine's homily on verses 6 through 14 from the first chapter of the Gospel of John. Stay tuned for the conclusion of this magnificent homily by St. Augustine on next week's episode of SOS Sermons of Saints. Welcome to the Virgo Potens YouTube channel. If you enjoy this video, give it a like. I also invite you to subscribe to this channel so that you won't miss new content. Please prayerfully consider supporting my work by becoming a patron of Virgo Potens on Patreon and or by buying one of my books. My ebooks are available on Amazon as well as on the Apple Bookstore. For those who prefer a physical copy rather than an ebook, my book, Spiritual Warfare, Know Thy Enemy, is also available as a paperback on Amazon. If you are interested in making a one-time contribution, I suggest that you do so by simply buying one of my books. I am thankful for your support. Links to Patreon and to my books will be posted in the comments section of this video. The continuation of this work isn't possible without you. Lastly, and most importantly, please pray for me. May the Virgin Most Powerful guide and protect you.